as a clinician, you can't tell a patient, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not sure how to treat your breast cancer, Mrs. Smith. Um, come back to me in five years when I figured out a little bit more about the genome. Right? Mrs. Smith needs, or Mrs. Jones needs their treatment now. Um, so you don't have that luxury. And on, on, but as a scientist, you, you, you have to tell yourself that, that the kinds of strategies that you're using currently have got to be primitive. I mean, certainly we're primitive at the time that we were using many of these chemotherapies for many diseases, for many forms of cancer. Not for testicular cancer, where chemotherapy is remarkably effective, but for, for lung cancer, for instance, where chemotherapy is not that effective. So, um, so that tension is very acutely felt in the book. Um, that said, how do we know that, that, the, that, the, that the therapies of today will not become outmoded uh, tomorrow? I hope they become actually outmoded tomorrow. I frankly hope that, you know, I hope that, we, that in a decade from now, we, we look back and, and at, at, this, at this moment in oncology and we find it laughable, in the same sense we find purging laughable um, or, or find bleeding laughable. Um, I hope that happens. Um, and um, and that's, what, that's what makes science or medicine very dynamic. Um, the knowledge of yesterday. I can tell you with some, I can tell you with a great degree of certainty that CML, chronic myelogenous leukemia, was a disease, actually multiple myeloma, um, breast cancer, just to give you three cancers. The, the paradigms that I learned to treat as a, young, as a young fellow, the paradigms that I learned to treat these diseases have changed so dramatically that I, can, I, had, to barely, I had to relearn, as an attending, I had to relearn everything about treating all the, these three cancers in the span of my training program. Um, and so that's a reminder that, you know, Things are changing really rapidly.